In this video, I'm going to go through three different Power Automate flows that may be useful to you uh, if you're a capacity admin in Fabric. Um, but before you watch this video, I encourage you to check out two other videos that this builds off of on the Hoosier BI channel. Um, one is the last video I put out where you can just shows you the foundation or the basics of using uh, Azure resource uh, management actions within flow to pause, resume, or resize your fabric capacity. We'll use that one a lot in this video. And then there's one I did before for one of these flows where you can actually use a flow to query your metrics app data set and check the health of your capacity, how, how utilized is it, or do you have throttling uh, potentially is starting to occur. All right. Uh, and that'll apply to this last one. So I'll spend some time going through this first one and then the other two have very similar patterns and we'll go through those faster. So if we go into this one and edit, um, I have just a F2 capacity, uh, for example. And in this one, my scenario might be, hey, I really, I'm a small company and all my employees are in the same time zone and nobody does off hours work. So I'd really like to save cost by only running my capacity while people are working. And so in this case, I'm using a recurrence trigger and I've set it up to run. Um, you could do this with multiple flows. I got tricky here and tried to do it with one. And basically, hey, I want this flow to run uh, all the, the work days, Monday through Friday. And then I want it to run at eight and five o'clock. And I want it to start at the zero minute, so right on the hour. Um, and then uh, like in the previous video, I have this variable where I generate this string with a concat function with capacities slash and then the name of my F2 capacity so that I can use it in multiple actions downstream. And then I have this step here where I'm dynamically generating one of, of two words, either resume or suspend. And I'm basically just using some if logic here, and I'm looking at the time that this flow is running. I happen to be in EST. Uh, so I'm taking the current time at the time this flow is running, converting it to standard time. And then I'm saying, hey, if this is the eight o'clock run, remember I set this to run at eight and five o'clock. So if I if, if this happens to be the run that's eight o'clock, I want it to resume. Uh, and then um, if it's five o'clock, I want it to suspend. And in the previous video, I walked through how to um, do, do the stuff in detail of what I'll show you here. So I'm just walking through the overall flow. So then what I would do next is I would go out and read a resource. Uh, I use that variable from above and you know populate it as, as so. And then before I do a resize, uh, sorry, a pause or resume, I'm going to go out and check the current state of it. And I covered this in the previous video where I go from this read a resource and I go to the properties field and then the state uh, value in that uh, and then have a condition here. And this is where it gets a little tricky. And I have just one of the examples shown here. I'll try to make this a little bigger. I'll hover over one of them. So basically I've got two scenarios and so I need uh, both these to be true. Uh, so in the first one, I'm saying, hey, if it's currently paused uh, and my action that I generated above with the if above um, ends up being resume, if those are both true, uh, then that's going to generate true from this condition. And then in the opposite case, uh, I have, and this is for when we get to the end of the day, you know, if it's currently active and my previous thing said um, suspend, um, then then it becomes true again. Uh, and I have an or here. So if either of those are true, so this will work on the 8 a.m. or the 5 p.m. Uh, flow. And again, you may choose to split this out into two flows just to keep it simpler. Uh, then if if either of those are true, then I can go down and use the invoke resource operation. Again, I covered all three of these actions in the previous video. Uh, and I can go ahead and uh, provide the output to the action name. And so this will either come with uh, suspend or resume. It'll be dynamically populated. And if the condition is true, then it'll give the right um, 
action name here and my capacity will be paused or resumed. Okay, so that's the first flow and, and all three of these flows uh, I've exported as a zip and you can find them and I'll put this link in the description as well. But all three of these flows are here in case you want to use it to get a head start if you're going to modify it to meet your own business needs. All right, the second one is instead of pause or resume, I just want to make it a little bigger during my peak time. And so I'll just show this one. And in my case, I look at my metrics app and it shows that, boy, everybody comes in and they run last week's report first thing in the morning. So I, I see this big surge uh, from 8 to 10 a.m. in the morning and I want to make my capacity bigger. So similar to the last one, um, this in this case, I'm just running every Monday. Right. And then I want it to run at 8 and 10 a.m. right on the hour. I use the same variable to generate the string uh, to name my capacity. In my case, it's called uh, this. And then similar to before, I use an if statement and I check to say, hey, is this the 8 a.m. hour or is it the 10 a.m. hour? Um, so you'll have you would have to change this too if you use different hours, for example. And, and I have this if here and then it generates either the string of F4 or F2. Now I have just this F2 capacity that I'm using for demo purposes. You may be using F64, F128, whatever. Uh, and then I would go and read a resource. Um, you need to make sure that your flow is running before you try to resize it. Otherwise, your flow will get an error. Um, so again, I'm just going out and doing that read a resource action. And then I go here and I check to make sure I look at the current state. So I have this compose step here that goes into the properties and the state field uh, from that read a resource. And then if it is active, I know I can go ahead and resize it. And then I, uh, again, pass that same variable with my string with capacity slash my name. And if I expand this, I go down to the SKU name. And this is where I have that composed from that if that either generates F4 or F2, depending on which time of day this flow is running. Okay. All right. So that's the second scenario. And again, with all these, I definitely encourage you to have like a, an additional flow that comes behind these. You know, if you really want to make sure you're managing costs that says, Hey, I assume it's, it's supposed to be paused. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make sure it's positive or I want it to make sure it's the small size, you know, uh, after this surge period, um, that's definitely a good practice just in case something goes wrong with one of your flows. You don't want to find out later that you've had a big spin there unintentionally. All right. And so then the last one here is a little more advanced. Um, and again, in the previous video, I showed how to query the metrics app just to go and get um, the current health of your capacity. How close am I getting, getting to throttling uh, for interactive delay or rejection or background rejection? So if I edit this one, this one's a little more involved. Um, the first part of this one is actually straight from that previous video. So definitely encourage you to check that out. Um, and in this case, you could choose what you want. Um, I had, I meant to change this to like 30 minutes or something. So, you know, you could do it every 15 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour or whatever. Um, and then there's a step here, as I went through in the previous video, where you give some details about what your capacity ID is and then which workspace your metrics app is sitting in and what's the data set ID. And that video goes through how to set, how to find that information. Then I have this DAX query that uh, takes some of that information from above my capacity ID and passes it in here. It goes and finds out what's the latest available uh, data point, right? So I'm going to just go get the latest uh, point there. And then for that time point, go and find what's my current level of interactive delay, uh, interactive rejection or background rejection. And in my case, I'm just going to use the interactive uh, rejection one. But you could, again, come up with your own logic here as well. So then I have a query, a data set where it goes off and uses the workspace ID and data set ID that I provided above. Um, it passes in the query text from, from the step above. 
And then I just use this um, compose step to just pull out just the uh, interactive rejection value, right? Um, and again, if you want to use this, that this uh, zip file from this flow uh, will is available as I showed in, in GitHub there. So you can get this expression um, if you can't read it from here. Um, so then just like with the previous ones, now I need to go and do my resource actions on my capacity. Again, I generate my string to identify my uh, capacity. Then I go out and read a resource. And um, we use that in a couple places downstream. So the first thing I'm going to check is, is it active? Uh, and again, it likely is if you're considering this kind of a flow, it's likely running all the time. Um, and so then the next thing I do is I check the SKU size. Again, you're probably going to deal with bigger numbers here. This is just for demo. So I'm using F2 and F4. Uh, and so basically it says, hey, am I, is my capacity currently in F2? Uh, and then it says, and then there's two paths that can go down. So I'll do this, the F1, it is an F2. And so if I, if my compose step above where I get that current interactive rejection value, uh, if it's say it's greater than 75% or I can make it hundred uh, percent, for example, um, if it's getting too high, then I can go ahead and use this create or update a resource action. Um, and then down here I can say, Hey, I want this to increase to an F4, right? So again, you decide for your business logic what size you want to change it to. And then if I collapse the yes side, uh, I can go down the other path. So it, say it's currently uh, at a higher size. In my case, an F4 is the, the max I wanted to get. Um, so this is the F4 side. And so this is where I want to evaluate, hey, if things calm down. And so now I can say, hey, has the uh, is the interactive rejection percentage down below 25%? And I haven't really done too much to pick the, the exact the best values here. So again, you may want to experiment and figure out what works best for your business. Um, but you get the idea that hey, I want to make sure things have calmed back down. So I'm looking for a less than or equal to type of thing here. And then if it is, then I can go ahead and do a different create or update a resource action. And in this case, I'm saying, hey, let's go back down to an F2, right? And so again, if I've got this running every 30 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever, um, you can actually dynamically uh, size your capacity in response to what your usage demand looks like. Okay. All right. So uh, again, I'll put this link in the chat if you want to use any of the three I've just gone through. And again, if these are helpful to you, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel.